Tracy Sorrell is an award-winning author exploring Cherokee and Native stories for young minds. Her inclusive writing allows new narratives to take shape and empowers Native children and families to see themselves on the page. Storytelling is an integral part of being a Cherokee community and a Cherokee family. I grew up with lots of colorful storytellers. And so I feel like the work that I do is in a continuation of that. And we have so many gifted storytellers across the Cherokee Nation. And I just hope that, you know, the books that I share reflect all of those things that have been given to me. CEO, I'm Tracy Sorrell, and I was born in Claremore, Oklahoma. I am the oldest of three siblings. I also write books for children under the name Tracy Sorrell. For me, it is a calling. Whether it's sharing a graphic novel, you know, fiction or nonfiction, it can be a picture book about a day at a powwow. It can be the celebration of just Cherokee people living their lives across the four seasons. Stories that show us in our full humanity, that help young people understand the sovereignty of Native nations. My early years were spent a lot on the road. So my brother and sister and I, you know, spent a lot of time living in the country and also living in small towns. One of the things that my mom very much wanted for all three of us children was to go to college. And that really motivated me to work hard in school. So I was accepted to the University of California, Berkeley. When I got to Berkeley, my plan was to be a professor of Native Studies and to you know, teach in a Native Studies department like my mentors that I was taking classes with. So I ended up getting other degrees. I got a graduate degree in Native American Studies with a focus in federal Indian law and policy at the University of Arizona. In my early 30s, I went and lived in New Mexico. I ended up meeting my husband out there and we got married at San Diego Pueblo. We had our son out there and once he was born, I was started looking at the books that I had, you know, because I had collected picture books over the years. That is what spurred me to start writing. You know, I looked at where are the depictions of Cherokee people in the present? Where are we post-1900? I thought, what are other Cherokee families reading with children? What are teachers pulling off the shelves and sharing? What are librarians putting out for our young people? I just was alarmed because I thought, nothing has changed. How is this possible in the 21st century that we have not made any progress with the amount of information that we have access to? If things are going to change for us, it has to start with young people. Because if it's not, what's the cost? We have another generation that grows up to be teachers, to be elected officials, to be business people, federal judges, that are potentially going to do more harm to us as Native people, our ability to maintain our languages, our cultural practices, our ceremonies, and that simply has to stop. It's really hard to see because I think that's a cardinal up there. Mm -hmm. That's totally one background. So once my son was born and I read to him from the time he was, you know, in the womb until after he was born every every day, I read books to him. I realized there was a lack of contemporary books. My first book published was We Are Grateful, Ojali Haliga. That book came to me again, as a way to just give my son and other Cherokee children a reflection of their daily lives, things that we do across the seasons, and really nestled in a core value which we're taught, and that's to be grateful, you know, regardless of what circumstances are. That life is not always wonderful. There are wonderful things to celebrate, sure, but even in difficulties or even with losses, we are taught to be grateful. 
One of the things that I enjoy the most about this work is that I get to share it with my son. Uh, the, he was certainly the reason that I started in this career. He's the reason that I get up and do this every day. To just see his excitement and the fact that he immediately needed to take it to school the next day to show his teacher and all of his classmates that the book was here, it was real. Words just can't describe like the elation because, you know, I wrote that book for him. You know, I wrote that book for all Cherokee children. So I now have um, six books out in the world and my seventh will be published in the fall of 2022. Once a book comes out into the world, then you have to uh, help share it with others. And I'm happy to be able to bring that to the community where kids can have an interactive story time. Not just with me though, with uh, the illustrator, Madeline Goodnight, who's a Chickasaw Nation citizen. And a lot of people think me as the writer, this is my book. Well, it's not my book. I'm, I'm a co-creator with the illustrator and all the people who have helped that story before it gets to the publisher. But then there's an entire publishing team of individuals who are bringing that book into the world. One of the things that I never stop being grateful for and it can make me very emotional is when I see a child who is hugging one of my books tightly or has opened it up, you know, and is reading it and just absolutely delighted with, you know, the story or saying, oh, you know, I've done this or I love this. I don't have a background in writing. And so a lot of people will say, well, how have you done this? And I said, well, I've, you know, I've taken workshops. I do a lot of reading. I check out a lot of books from the library. And one of the things that I want to do is cultivate more writers from this area in Northeastern Oklahoma. So the Center for Writers and Poets at OSU Tulsa offers community classes. And so for the second time now, I'm able to teach a writing picture books course in that class and to share, again, what I know about the industry, what I know about the craft of writing stories for young people. What is it like as a writer to be thinking about what's represented in the book? Because the text is saying one thing, the art is taking that and elevating it to another level. Remember, we have to respect the intelligence of our audience, and kids are extremely intelligent. They have limited experiences, but they're not incapable of learning these things. So with that type of a book, you know. So through the workshop, I you know, am able to share what I've learned, what other people have, have taught me with people in the community, and that feels really good. Whether that's writing fiction or nonfiction, I see that as something certainly I enjoy and I love the creative part of it, but I also see it as a larger calling and mission to help right a wrong. You know, our young people should be able to see themselves. They should see stories that reflect their reality. When I think about what it means to be a Cherokee woman in the 21st century, I definitely see myself as um, the modern, you know, contemporary manifestation of all the Cherokee women that have come before me. And so I carry that sense of responsibility for my family and for community. I think that oftentimes our history has not always been a joyous one, you know, the things that we've experienced through colonization in this country. And yet we have so much to, to celebrate and to enjoy. That's what being Cherokee means to me. Remembering who we've been, but knowing that, as many people say, if we have been prayed and loved and dreamed into being now. And so for the short span of our lives, you know, however many seasons that we're here, I truly feel like it's incumbent upon me as, as a Cherokee woman to take the gifts that I've, I've been given and 
be in good relation with others and encourage them to develop whatever gifts and abilities they've been given to help our, our nation and our people continue into the future because that's certainly what our ancestors have done for us. Sure that Renee was provided all these different Cherokee citizens to look through and to see them in here makes my heart happy. I think of a great author, a great mom who is always there. I think of a strong, empowered indigenous woman. I'm glad that she's my mom.